Good morning, teacher friends. It's Kenzie from the Literacy Teacup. I am here bright and early this morning to talk to you about literacy centers. So I'm currently a second grade teacher. I am about this close to packing up my whole classroom and getting ready to move into a position as a reading interventionist for next year. But before I did that, I wanted to take some time to talk about how our literacy centers have been working this year and some of the ways that they've evolved over the last few years. This could definitely work in a second or first grade classroom and I think could also be adapted to work in kinder or even third or higher. So hopefully no matter which grade you'll be teaching next year, you'll be able to get some ideas from this video that you can use in your own classroom. In my class, we have eight literacy centers that students are visiting two each day, Monday through Thursday. Friday is a little bit different. It's kind of a catch-up day. When they are working in those eight literacy centers, my students are in heterogeneous groups. So there's a whole mixture of reading abilities and levels. Having those heterogeneous groups really allows them to support each other. The other thing it allows me to do is make groups based more on behavior and which kiddos work well together. So in the past, when I have done more homogenous groups based on their reading abilities, I always end up having some kids who really just can't work well together. They're either best friends and off task or they're squabbling, things like that. So when you group more heterogeneously, you're able to separate those kids and create a more collaborative environment. So you might be thinking, okay, if they're grouped heterogeneously, how are you pulling small groups? I'll talk more about that in a bit, but basically the students are working independently in those eight centers. All of those eight are independent centers. And then I am just plucking kids out from their center to pull over for small groups. So the small groups that I have are homogenous. They are based on their reading abilities. Also have aid support a lot of the time during literacy centers. So she pulls some kids out as well. The other really nice thing about having all of your centers be independent and then just kind of plucking kids out is if you are gone for a day and need a sub or if your aid doesn't show for the day, then you're not worried about, oh, that's part of the rotation. What do I have kids do during that time? They just carry on with their independent work and you can catch up with those reading groups later on. This is the first slide that I show at the beginning of the week for my kiddos and normally this would have their names and the groups that they're in. I went ahead and just replaced it with their like rough reading ability so that you can see that these groups really are mixed levels. There are six groups and by the end of those four days, all of the groups have made it to each center one time. Another really important consideration is differentiating the work so that students are actually able to do what you're asking them to do independently. One of the things that has really, really helped with that are our literacy center folders. So each kiddo has one of these, they keep them in their book bin. You can take a look back at my classroom tour video if you wanna see kind of how we store all of that. But it has their name here, I've just covered this one up. And then on the inside of these folders, there are three pockets. So these trifold folders actually came from Dollar Tree this year and I'm hopeful they'll have them back next year because they have been awesome. Each kiddo has a pocket for word work, one for writing, and then one for their finished work. And I will run you through what I put in each of those pockets in just a minute when we talk about each of the centers. But it's important to know that the work that goes into the literacy center folders is completely differentiated. So whatever skills that particular student is working on in their small group with me, those two pieces of work, the word work and the writing, will directly relate to that skill for them to be practicing independently. And that will be the first thing that they work on in those two centers. Let's run through what centers would look like for one day in my classroom. As soon as students come in, they are pulling their center folder out of their book bin and heading over to the carpet. On the TV, we will have those student groups displayed. And then once everyone is settled, I switch it over to the center slide for the day. The slide shows the day of the week, where each group is in their center, a little reminder to work quietly and be on task. And then the black box is actually our cleanup song. So I'll talk about that in a minute. But I have one of these slides for every rotation. So two per day. And you can see that by the end of Thursday, all of the groups have made it to all eight of the centers. And then Friday is our catch up day. 
and the kids are familiar with where each of these centers takes place. So if you take a look back at my classroom tour video, you can see a better layout of where each center happens. Students are working in their centers for 25 to 30 minutes. When I'm ready for them to clean up, I just ring my little wireless doorbell and click play on the cleanup song. So you really can use any song for your cleanup song. We used the Olaf song from Frozen for most of the year. I just like to pick one that's about like two minutes long so they're not spending forever cleaning up. Once the kids have cleaned up, then they come back to the carpet with their center folders. I change the slide to their next one. They go back in, start working again, and then repeat the process. For part of the year, I had this block all together and that worked really well. For another part of the year, I had two separate times and that worked well too. We just cleaned up after that first round and then went back into the centers the second one. All right, let's take a look at each of the eight centers and what students are doing during that time. I will start with the ones that go into the center folder. So for word work, the kids start out with whatever is on the word work side of their green folder. And these are just some examples of things that I've used this year and really liked. So these I spy where they are reading the word and finding the picture to match. Um, the lookalike words from Drop in Knowledge with Heidi, where they are finding the one that matches the picture out of ones that obviously look very, very similar. I have these ones where they read the sentence and match the picture and ones where they are reading the word and then putting it with the picture it matches. And these are both from Miss Giraffe. So I will link all of the resources in the description. I am thinking about independent work and choosing the activities for kids. It's really important to make sure that they actually have to read it. So you will see that I don't have any like word sorts where they just match the letters or can do it without reading the words or just copying words. They're always things where they actually have to read it and then find like the picture. Keep that in mind as you're picking your center work that you want to be sure the kids are actually reading or writing the words rather than just um, matching them and like copying. Also for word work, if I have kids who are kind of past the phonics skills that we're working on and they are reading pretty fluently, then this was a fun little challenge that I gave towards the end of the year. So these word letters, they start with something at the bottom and then they have to think of another word, the opposite of sink, take away one letter, then add two. So this would be float trench that surrounds a castle, that would be moat. And so it works a lot on their vocabulary, but it gives them some little um, hints here with how, what to do with the letters. So those were really fun. Those were definitely a challenge for my higher kiddos. Once the kids have finished whatever is in that center folder, then they get to do the extra activities in the center. So throughout the year, I've had some different things in here, but I really, really like these sets and I'll link these in the description because again, the students are having to actually read the words. So on this, on the dominoes, they have one domino that has like a picture and then it matches with the next one that has the word and then another picture. So then they'd be looking for like cloud and something else that matches. So they kind of are self-checking too when they get to the end. These ones have like the word, but it's missing a piece. So then they have to find the little like diphthong here that would go in the OY. And then these puzzles have all of the little picture pieces in here and the kids are matching them with these pages to build it. So again, they have the words here, they can read and then look for those pictures. If they finish all of this stuff, then I usually just throw something kind of fun in here like bananagrams that they can play. Um, to fill the rest of the time. But typically, by the time that they finish their center folder work and maybe do one of these activities, their 25 minutes is up. On the writing side of the center folder, I keep those same considerations in mind. So do they actually have to read the words and write authentic sentences? Well, this is one of my favorite activities. This is also from Miss Giraffe. And they are figuring out a sentence that matches this picture. So like this one would be, I will stick a stamp on it. So they have to go through and read, is it I will or I snob? Okay, I will. Is it I will stiff or I will stick? And so they end up doing a lot of reading and then once they've colored in their sentence up here, then they rewrite the sentence on the line below. So this has been really good and she has these for all of the different phonics patterns. The other thing that I have to be really careful of, especially in um, this Miss Draft stuff, I like it a lot, but you have to be kind of cautious that it doesn't include phonics patterns you have haven't taught yet um, because sometimes like her ones for blends will have vowel teams in them already. So take a look before you get these 
in here for kids because that's the other important part of making the work independent is making sure it doesn't have skills that they just don't know. Just once the kids are pretty proficient with that, some of my higher kiddos this year, I started working on paragraphs. So I actually had my TA cut out all of these strips and then we mixed them all up into a Ziploc bag and stored them just in like a drawer of the writing center. And so they got these and then they sorted them into two piles. So whether it was the cats and dogs paragraph or the plants and animals paragraph, and then they glued them down onto a page that looked like this. So they had to put them in order and then write one more detail sentence that fit with that paragraph. So this activity is from Sarah's snippets, and this is kind of a tricky one. So they are reading the sentence, which you'll see it has a lot of that phonics pattern in it, and then they pick three colors to underline who, did what, where, and when. They're kind of doing each part of the sentence, which again requires that they read it. So once the kids are done with the work in their center folder for writing, then they move on to pick something else from the writing center. So this product is from Missing Tooth Grins and it has been awesome this year. So basically each drawer has a different type of writing in it and they change like seasonally. So for example, our end of the year ones, how to go camping, how to bathe a dog. In the winter, it might've been like how to build a snowman or how to make hot cocoa. So what's really nice about this is that the prompt change but the format stays really consistent so you can change like you're writing prompts but you want to keep what they're being expected to do the same so like all about bees for summertime might have been all about reindeer all about pumpkins at different points in the year they have lists and this picture one where they look at the color of the picture and then write a story that matches it so the kids like these a lot um and they like that they change with the seasons, but they always know what to do. So once they're done with their center folder work, they pick something from here. And once they're finished with it, or both of those tasks will go in the finished work side of their folder. The third center is our flex or handwriting center. So I called it flex in case I wanted to change it to something else, but it did stay pretty much handwriting throughout the year. So when we started out, we just did like these little handwriting pages coming off of COVID and using so much technology. My kids needed a lot of practice with just paper, pencil, handwriting. So we did one of these front and back. So like we would do D and E each day. And then as the year moved on and we made it through the whole alphabet with these, then we moved on to these read it, fix it, write it ones where they're going through and they're circling which letters need to be capitalized, putting in the punctuation that they need, read it, making sure to read it, which adding punctuation kind of requires that they do that. And again, they can work together on this. And then they rewrote the paragraph here. So there isn't a space in the center folder for any of the other centers. So these actually live just in the top drawer of the little box here. So when they come over, they just pull out the stuff in the top drawer, get that done, put it in the finished side of their folder, and then they can move on to the bottom two drawers. So the bottom two drawers just have, have some other like fine motor tasks. So these little one page cut and paste crafts or like a really intricate coloring page. And then they can also choose to do like building Legos or these little dollar spot like linky block things. Um, so yeah, so that's flex. They're just doing handwriting and then working on some fine motor skills. And then the last center is heart words and fluency. So this was heart words for most of the year and then fluency just at the very tail end. But I really, really like these heart words pages. These are from um, Mrs. Winner's Bliss. Christina Winner's is awesome. And again, these require that the kids are able to actually read the words. So they're not just copying down the high frequency words. They are pointing and saying, and we have practiced um, these words whole group already, so they should be familiar with them. Then they're sounding it out and putting a dot in the box for each sound that they hear. So like this one, they would do a, g, a, n, again. How many sounds do you hear? Four. And then they write the letters that match each sound. So like for this one, that a uh, is the a, g, g, a uh, would be a, i, n, n. So then they're gonna draw a heart around the tricky part. So these kids would probably draw a heart around the AI because it kind of says that E eh sound or I, eh, and then the A for a uh, if they haven't learned the schwa yet because those are the two tricky parts. The G and the N make the sound that they should. So we would leave those alone. Then they are going to write the word three times. Again, drawing a heart above the tricky parts. And then at the bottom, they write a sentence with that word. 
So each week I just put a few of our heart words into a little packet for them. So they might get like four of these pages stapled together. Again, that's in the top drawer of this. And when they are done with that, they had some other choices in here, um, like these mystery word cards. Later in the year, I had them doing some fluency reading. So they had a fluency folder where they kept like just some little decodable passages and word lists they were practicing and they would just flip a timer, practice reading it. I also have this game from Amy Scott. So they put all of the yellow cards in one pile. This is to practice fluency and then all of the red cards. So for example, you would pick a red card, sleepy voice, and then a yellow card. I'm going to read this in a sleepy voice. And they really thought this was fun too. There's like grumpy voice, worried voice. And so this is a good just little fluency and prosody practice activity. Then my students are using three online programs during centers as well. The first one is Epic Books, which I'm guessing a lot of people are already familiar with. But in case you're not, Epic is an awesome online library that allows students to explore a variety of books, including ones that will actually read to them out loud. So this is pretty cool for your beginning readers to be able to read text that they normally wouldn't be able to read on their own. Sometimes I have included like a listening guide with Epic, but for most of the year, I just let my kids pick what they wanted to read or listen to and just go for it. And they were very on task with the center. The next online program that I use is called Lalilo, and it is an online phonics program. So when the kids first get in, it looks like this. They are gonna click play and then select their name. Then they are basically answering some questions and completing challenges to move through the little like online universe. And so it will ask them all sorts of different phonics related things, including a feature where it actually has them read out loud and uses the microphone to record it and then play back their reading. Other nice thing about Lalilo is their teacher dashboard. I went ahead and covered up my students' names, but you can see that for every student, you're able to see their progress working through the phonics skills, all the way from consonants, up through digraphs and blends, and you can see which kids are still working on more of those basic skills and which ones have progressed all the way through. The third program that my students are using online is called MyPath. This program is provided by our district in correlation with the NWA map growth testing that we do. And I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about it because my kids didn't love it so much and I wasn't crazy about it either, but I did wanna just mention it that this is our last center that my students are doing each week. As the kids are working in each of these centers, I am pulling out my small groups. So I'm not gonna talk too much about what I do in literacy small groups because I have a feeling that there will be many videos about that to come next year, but it is really heavily based on phonemic awareness and phonics skills. So I use the core phonics survey from this book to help determine what phonics skills my kids are needing help with. This is Assessing Reading Multiple Measures. It is from the Core Literacy Library. And the assessment that I like to use to determine small groups is the Core Phonics Survey. We also use the BPST and I have some other phonemic awareness assessments that I use as well, but this one is probably my favorite. So this is the recording sheet. You just go through and circle or highlight the ones that they get correct. And then the student materials look like this. So they're naming letters, stating the letter sounds, long and short vowel sounds, and then it goes into reading and decoding. So you'll see that there are two rows of real words and then one row of nonsense words for every um, section. And so basically I just go until the kids get to the point where they're not able to do at least two in the row, and then we stop and that is how I group them for my small groups. During that small group time, we are reviewing previously taught reading and writing skills. We are decoding at the word and sentence level, decodable passages, decodable books, lots and lots of decoding, and then also sentence and word dictation. So again, I will go into more of that in a later video, but I just wanted to kind of give an overview of what is happening in those literacy small groups. Okay, so we have made it to Friday. The kids have had a chance to visit all eight of the literacy centers, and now their responsibility is just to finish up that work. So if they have missed anything, whether it was because they got pulled for a reading group, they were absent that day, or anything like that, this is their time to finish it up. 
by the end of the week, they should have at least four things in that finished pocket of their literacy center folder. So they should have the word work and the writing that I put in there at the beginning of the week, the handwriting or flex page that they pulled from that center, and the heart words that they pulled from that center. And as they finish that, they put it all in the finished pocket. And then I have just a little basket over by my mailboxes where they go and just set their folder in. Then they have some time to do free choice. During that time, I am pulling any of the little like extra groups that I haven't seen yet that week. For example, I do book clubs with some of my higher kids. I might pull them during that time, or I am checking those folders, popping that stuff right into their mailboxes, and then I have the folders already in that basket to put in the folder work for the following week. I really hope that this video was helpful for you and gave you some ideas to use as you are thinking about literacy centers for next year. If you have any questions or would like to know more, please don't hesitate to leave those in the comments. As always, if this video was helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that you don't miss my next video. You can also keep up with me on Instagram at the Literacy Teacup. See you later.